The Negrito peoples are considered to be the first inhabitants of the Philippines. Also known as Catatubos, they lived for centuries as hunters and gatherers and depended entirely on the rich resources of the forests and rivers for their food sources. Anthropologists date their arrival in the area to thousands of years ago. Anthropologists believe that these, the first humans uh, were known to be in the Philippines about 25,000 years ago, long before the ancestors of most Filipinos came to the islands. There are five Aita Negrito groups that live in the provinces of Pampanga, Zambales, and Tarlac. The Aita Abalan have lived since prehistoric times in the areas north of Mount Pinatubo in the western parts of Tarlac province. and also into Zambales province. As other Filipino peoples expanded and settled in western Tarlac, some Itas have relocated deeper into the mountains. Others remained and intermarried with lowland Filipino settlers. The Aita Abalen have a rich cultural history of native music and dance. Many use the same kinds of tools their ancestors used for thousands of years. Making fire with bamboo. <laughs> a piece of bamboo can be used as a cooking utensil in the forest when there is no access to pots or pans. If there is someone who has caught a pig, they will share with its aita in the barrio. The cooking utensils of our ancestors was bamboo. They are cooking meat and rice inside bamboo. Smells really good. What has been cooked in bamboo smells good. What is good about our Aita culture is that if someone approaches us who needs something to eat, we will give to him even our own food. Because even though other people groups say that people needing food should be treated differently, we Aitas will give to them the food we have if we sense that these people cannot endure without help. That is what I believe about the good of our Aita culture. They still weave fine baskets for many purposes. Hunting methods changed with the introduction of the hunting rifle, but many Abalan still know how to use the traditional bow and arrow. The use of snares and traps is an art that was not lost over the centuries. This demonstration shows how quickly the Aita can make an effective, deadly trap for wild boar. In the village of Mamot, the river provides a variety of uses. We come to the river to make shelters, have picnics and catfish. And this is the pleasant life 
of the Katotobos because here is where we can get fish to provide for our livelihood. Andito na lahat ang mga isda na aming pinagkukuhanan ng kabuhayan namin. Sometimes there are so many fish that we can sell them to the lowlanders. Here in the remote village of Dirita, the Abalen grow and process rice in small patches. Everyone gets involved in the process. Vegetable gardens in Dirita are carefully fenced and tended. Most Abalen still live in traditional homes. The main living and cooking area has a hard dirt floor. The sleeping area is raised about a meter off the ground. Livestock live in close proximity. The homes are kept tidy. Water is either carried from the river or wells. The Aita Abalen have their own language. The language is considered to be endangered due to intermarriage with lowland Filipinos and a lack of continued development. SIL is working to develop materials in the Aita Abalen vernacular language, which will help preserve the language for future generations. A committee of five Aita Abalen speakers are translating the New Testament into their own language. They consult Tagalog, Ilocano, and Sambal versions as they enter the first draft of their translation into the computer. Their computer skills are developing rapidly. We are translating the Bible so that the Word of God will be understood by many of our fellow Aita brethren. I am happy for the words in the Bible are going to the Aita language. Many of our fellow Aitas have not had any education, but even, even if they have not gone to school, they will be able to understand because we will read to them in the Aita language. My knowledge was increased about computers and especially about praying to God. And I am happy, for I am learning more because of the mercy of God to us. One project is an Abelin English Dictionary. This is one thing I will say about the dictionary. When I saw this dictionary, I thought that we can use this because law is our education. If there is a dictionary, it can add to our knowledge and we can look to see what this word means. For this dictionary, which I saw, big it its help to people like me who have not gone to school. Haitabalan language is a member of the Samba language family. Uh, they have their own unique language. Um, it's a beautiful language and I, it's been a pleasure to study their language. Uh, no, no other language in the Philippines is quite like it. Uh, the Aitabalan language is most closely related to Botolan Sambal in the province of Sambales, but it's also related to the other uh, five Aita languages. The majority of the Aita Abalan come from a tradition of belief in Aponamayadi, the Creator God. They interact with ancestral spirits, or anitos, in attempts to gain help for problems and difficulties of life. The Catholic and Methodist Church have both built chapels in several villages. Life is not easy for the Abalen people. 
The shrinking forest can no longer provide the adequate food sources it once did. Their limited food resources have become overburdened, and as a result, disease and hunger have become a way of life and death. 500 years ago and earlier, why almost all of the Philippines was still a uh, dense tropical forest. Today, most of that forest has been destroyed uh, by colonists coming in and clearing land for farming and the logging industry. So the Aita peoples can no longer live the way they did 100 years ago even by uh, foraging for wild foods, hunting and collecting wild plant foods to eat or to trade with the lowland uh, Filipino population. Anthropologist Dr. Tom Hedlund considered to be the foremost authority on the Negrito civilizations, lived for 40 years among the Agta people of northeastern Luzon. The reason they're declining is because their death rate is higher than their birth rate. And these Negrito peoples uh, uh, aren't able to live the way they used to live, and they're trying to, some of them are trying to switch over to farming. Some of them uh, are farming successfully, but in many cases, they don't have ownership to their own farmland. Uh, they have a very high death rate. That's a tragic thing. The remoteness of Abalan villages makes access to modern health care very difficult for Abalan who can walk the many miles from their remote homes to find transportation to Tarlac City the provincial hospital provides treatment. This is about our brethren who are Katutubo, who we are calling Aitas, and this is about what they mean to our community and who we are to them. The Aitas are the same as us Filipinos, and they are the ones of whom it is being said they belong to the marginalized sector of our society. It is, I think, our social responsibility, social obligation to make sure that as we grow and develop as part of the human community, we also put them in a situation whereby Culturally, they can grow, and as humans, they must also grow because that is the uniqueness of each and every person, of each and every community. To add even more stress to the Aita's difficult existence, they are also negatively stereotyped by non-Negrito Filipinos who treat them as inferior. They call them beluga, a derogatory term. Even students are not immune. Because I am Aita, they sometimes mock me about my curly hair. Discrimination, sometimes we feel discrimination because we are different in physical appearance having curly hair and we are small. I am an Aita Abandon, and my classmates are Ilocanos and others who are lighter skinned. We feel we are being discriminated against, and sometimes it becomes a hindrance or barrier for us Aita Abandon to study because it weakens our resolve to continue. This word baluga for us is the lowest category possible because it's like we are being put down very low to the ground. Just call us katutubo or native. It is much nicer to hear the word katutubo rather than baluga. For us, the word baluga sounds like a borrowed word that means something dirty. It was not long ago that the Aita Abalen people did not use money, but instead obtained needed supplies through bartering and trading goods. Today, some grow enough rice to sell and some produce charcoal for cash. Many village men work as day laborers for lowland farmers, 
at the pay rate of about $2 a day. The Aita Abelen are a people in the process of change. They recognize that their future survival as a people relies on the education of their children. We Aitas want to be able to study, even just to be able to write, for many of us have not been able to get an education. What my father said in the past, now, he said, we are already in the barrio. You study well, he said. For if you will study, you will be able to write. You later will be the one to replace the one in charge of the barrio. Let me say that the, the most important thing, in my opinion, that can improve the lives of extremely marginalized people, fourth world peoples, these are people that can't even read, is education. Basic literacy. When literacy comes into a group of Aita people, and especially literacy for women, their lot in life improves very quickly. For Abelen children, access to education can be a challenge. Some children attend government-operated schools, but many remote village schools only have the first three grades. During the wet season, teachers are often unable to get to their schools, forcing classes to be canceled. In Mamat, students up to the sixth grade can attend locally, but to go on to high school, they must pay the cost of transportation to the nearest school. From Mamat, this cost is about $20 a month for each student. This is the equivalent of one-third of an average family's monthly income. The Philippine government is actively involved in trying to improve the lives of the Negrito peoples. The National Commission on Indigenous Peoples is making great strides to improve all basic services to the Aita. The, the Philippine government recognizes the existence of the indigenous people. Since the Philippine government recognizes the existence of indigenous peoples, that's the very reason why then uh, President Fidel Ramos pushed for the approval of indigenous peoples by the, ex, the Republic Act 8371. And under it, uh, April law, there was a uh, NCIP. As long as our partners like uh, SIL uh, are there, as long as IPRA is there, as long as the Philippine government is there, and as long as we, the community of Abiling tribe, uh, protect uh, our uh, costume and tradition. Uh, practicing our uh, tradition and our existence. That uh, we are, uh, wherever we go, we have to be proud of it. I do want to say something about uh, my appreciation. This is the government agency in the Philippines, uh, known locally as NCIP, uh, has really got leaders that are working for, on behalf of the Aita peoples. The Aita Abelen, descended from the first inhabitants of the Philippines and living for centuries as hunters and gatherers, are a proud, hard-working people. They are adjusting to a changing world around them. They ask for no handouts. They seek only an opportunity to develop a sustainable living environment where they can lead healthy, productive lives. The Aitas are Filipino just like us. Every Filipino should desire that the Aitas will enjoy life and be brought into the mainstream of society through the process where they will learn and become self-reliant. We are Aita. We are not beggars. We are living off our own hard work. Even when we only have foods like kamote and duyan to eat, 
we keep planting and living by the sweat of our own brow. I rejoice that I am a Katutubo because we are the first Filipinos here in the Philippines. What I want to see happen to my fellow Abenlen at this time is that we will preserve our traditions and our culture will continue because that is what confirms and proves to us that we are Katutubos.